Hey guys, welcome to the Critical Beauty Salon. First of all, I would like to thank our new subscribers. You guys are the best. We are just about 200 short of reaching 1,000 subscribers. So if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and click the bell below to receive instant notification for the next video. In my last vlog, I revealed the six things I like about Miss Earth. In today's vlog, I will reveal the five things that I hate about Miss Earth. And let's start now. At number five, mediocre facial beauty. There is a saying that beauty is subjective and that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. In other words, beauty cannot be judged objectively for what one person finds beautiful or admirable may not appeal to another person. Even though I find the majority of Miss Earth title holders facially beautiful, there are some whose beauty I find rather ordinary. I'm not going to mention names so as not to offend the fans of these title holders or the title holders themselves, but I will say that the queens whose faces I find ordinary include one from Europe, four from the Americas, and three from Asia. I'm sure you can figure them out yourselves. At number four, mediocre security. During the 2018 pageant, several contestants came forward with stories of alleged sexual harassment the day of experience at the hands of one of the pageant's longtime sponsors, Amado Cruz. On November 7th, Miss Earth Canada 2018 Jamie Vandenberg and Miss Earth England 2018 Abby Ann Gilas Brown wrote on Instagram about their experiences of harassment and bad management at Miss Earth 2018. Without naming the sponsor yet, Vandenberg and Giles Brown shared that the sponsor would call them and ask for their hotel room numbers. This inspired at least five other contestants, even from previous years, to also share their experiences of harassment and predatory behavior while competing at Miss Earth. It was alleged that these incidents had been happening since 2005. Listen, pageants and modeling competitions or any event that involves beautiful young women will always attract sexual predators. This is not limited to Miss Earth. What bothers me is that if sexual harassment allegations have been going on since 2005, Carousel Productions should have done something about it then. This gives the perception that Carousel does not care about the girls' safety and only cared about sponsors. At number three, odd selection of judges. I'm not quite sure what criteria does Carousel Productions look for in selecting the judges, but I find its approach rather odd and inconsistent. For example, the pageant has invited former queens from rival pageants like in 2003, when Evangeline Pasquale, Miss World 1973 first runner-up, sat in the judging panel. In 2006, they invited both Abigail Arenas, Bini 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 Universe 1997, and Justine Gabionza, Miss Tourism Queen International 2006. And in 2007, they invited Agnesa Vutaj, National Director of Miss Kosovo Albania's representative in Miss World 2004 and Miss Universe 2005. In 2016, the president of Miss World Philippines, Arnold Vegafria, judged the pageant. So if Miss Earth wants to strengthen and solidify their brand, they should not be inviting people associated with rival pageants. Oh, and in 2017, some beauty queen named Trom Lu was invited to judge that year, and she was described by the host, James Deacon, as simply a beauty pageant main title holder. So I did some research, and apparently Lu was Mrs. Universe 2017. Interesting. And get this. No beauty queen judged the pageant in 2007, 2008, 2011, 2012, and 2014. How weird is that? It also seems that Miss Earth is following the footsteps of Miss World by allowing Lorraine Shook, Executive Vice President of Carousel Productions, to judge as well in 2013, 2015, 2016, and 2018. And in 2017, in addition to Shook, 
Two other carousel executives, Ramon Monzon, the president, and Pichi Veneracion, the project director, also were part of the judging panel. At number two, arbitrary rules. For a pageant that seeks to play by the rules, Miss Earth, or in this case, Carousel Productions, sometimes bends its own rules just because the organizers feel like it. Let's take, for example, the citizenship requirement. On the official Miss Earth website, it says, important, a national delegate from Miss Earth should be a citizen of the country she will be representing, and a national pageant winner by a recognized Miss Earth franchise holder. Contact us for further inquiries and we will refer you to the national director in your country of citizenship. Now, let me get this straight. Crimea, which has been participating in the pageant since 2010, when it was still part of the Ukraine, was eventually annexed to the Russian Federation in 2014. One wonders if Crimea should not have been allowed entry because it is not really a country but rather a territory of either Russia or the Ukraine, depending on the time period. Likewise, Martinique and Réunion should not be allowed to compete because they are not nations, but rather overseas departments of France. There is no such thing as a Martinique or Réunion citizenship. The same logic would apply to England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, since these four states technically and politically comprise the United Kingdom. But I guess Carousel Productions wants more bodies on stage, and that's why they allow pseudo-countries to participate. In 2016, Miss Earth admitted Palestine, which is not and has never been a nation. Thus, to assume that the delegate was a Palestinian citizenship is absurd and deceptive. Ten years before, in 2006, Carousel admitted Tokelau, which is a dependent territory of New Zealand. Another rule that bothers me about Miss Earth is the height requirement. Whereas Miss Universe and Miss World have done away with the height requirement years ago, Miss Earth feels that a contestant must have a minimum weight of 5 feet 5 inches, or 165.10 centimeters. Scandal rocked the Miss Earth 2017 pageant when the organizers decided to eliminate Miss Earth South Africa, Irini Monzuris, from the competition because she failed to meet the minimum height requirement of 5 feet 5. She was only 5 feet 4. Carousel should have bent its rules this one time alone instead of giving the boot to Irini when the pageant had already entered its third week. On the Critical Beauty Facebook page, former National Director of Australia, Kelly Louise McGuire, Miss Earth Australia 2010, posted that she was annoyed by the pageant's seemingly arbitrary rules. She also posted a photo of herself with a much shorter Miss Earth Denmark, who apparently had not met the minimum height requirement, but nevertheless was allowed to compete. Go figure. At number one, Lack of proficient interpreters. My biggest pet peeve of Miss Earth is this inadequate staff of interpreters, that is, if you can call them interpreters. I don't recall a year where the pageant did not have at least one bad interpreter. Compared to Miss Universe or Miss World that hires professional interpreters, Miss Earth relies on anyone who claims he or she can interpret from one language to another, even relying on bilingual contestants themselves to do the translation. This practice needs to stop, as if it gives the perception that Carousel, the producers of the pageant, is just too cheap or too lazy or both to hire competent professional interpreters to assist the non-English speaking contestants to better express themselves in their native language. The final question and answer portion could make or break the candidate as pageant contestants are usually judged in terms of beauty and intelligence. Who can forget that moment in 2011 when an interpreter failed to do his job and ended up screwing Miss Venezuela's answer? She tried her best to keep on repeating her answer, but the translator just couldn't get it right. It eventually cost her the crown as she landed only in fourth place. Oh, 
son la solución y la, los adultos son los que realmente tienen toda la experiencia de, y han visto realmente todo el cambio ambiental desde nuestro pasado hasta nuestro presente. The child's, uh... Que los niños son los niños son el futuro. Yeah, the los, are the future. los adolescentes son los que tienen las soluciones y las van a ejercer. There were some cases, though, in which translators were not available. It happened to Teresa Faiskova from Czech Republic in this Earth 2012. Instead of answering the question which she did not understand, she just expressed a short message using some English words that she knew. Despite evading the question, she still won the pageant. This is your question. What would you consider as your defining moment as a woman? Can I speak? Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm so sorry. That's my problem because I don't understand question. So I will try to say it's just message. Uh, I want to say that uh, we have to protect Mother Earth uh, because, you know, helping Mother Earth happy people is not privilege. It's a duty for all of us who are living on this planet. Thank you. She gave us everything what we need to the life. So respect her and she will respect us. So thank you. Thank you so much, Salamat Po. I'm so sorry. In 2013, the Spanish-speaking interpreter was an improvement from past ones. And even though he might have botched Miss Venezuela's answer, the judges looked past this discrepancy and awarded her the crown anyway. It was painful to watch Miss Poland stammer in English, but blame the organizers for not having provided a Polish-speaking interpreter. Good evening, Alexandra. Good evening. In your opinion, why does God allow natural disasters to happen on Earth? Because um, God, uh, I think God uh, wants to uh, show uh, bad uh, people uh, how to um, how to um, how to love uh, together um, our god love everyone and uh, i think uh, in our world uh, should be uh, wrong side and bad uh, and good side and this is I attended my first Miss Earth pageant when it was held in Manila in late November 2014. During the top eight Q&A portion, Miss Brazil Leticia Silva was asked by one of the judges, when can you say that a woman is truly empowered? Miss Switzerland, Shayade Hogg, helped translate the question to Miss Brazil, but Miss Brazil replied in Portuguese. Host Justin Bratton thanked Miss Brazil, but Justin commented, that sounds good to me. He further commented, asking the audience, anybody else? By that, he meant, did someone else agree with him that Miss Brazil's answer sounded good to him? Then a frustrated Miss Brazil asked Justin to let Miss Switzerland interpret her answer, but Miss Switzerland apologized that she was not the interpreter for Miss Brazil. I'm so sorry, I'm not the translator for Miss Brazil. But Miss Switzerland interpreted it as, a woman is empowered if she can do what she wants, It comes from the inside, from the heart. This episode is one of the most embarrassing moments in the history of Miss Earth, though not as disgraceful as the infamous 2012 alleged bribery scandal video. Oh, oh, uh, can someone please tell host James Deacon to stop yelling the name of the country? Thailand! There you have it, the five things that I hate about Miss Earth. Do you agree or disagree? Comment below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, and share. Thank you for watching, guys. In my next vlog, I will reveal the top 18 favorites for the Miss Earth 2019 crown. See you then.
Bye.